Hey guys, welcome to Thursday, the 30th of September, 2021. Um, really saw a nice little rebound yesterday uh, across um, really the, well, the DAX really came out of the lows, uh, but quite overall, um, I think on equities, uh, quite a stagnant day. Uh, we're gonna look at a trade uh, that teed up really, really, really nicely in the Dow. And um, you know, still gonna be swinging this one uh, for for further upside. Um, major downside seen on dollar strength um, in the euro and cable getting absolutely taken out the back um, and down. I think last time I looked at it was down uh, 0.8%. Um, I think it's you know we'll have a look at this on the charts, but it's down well over uh, a percentage um, on 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 the on the week. Um, and oil, uh, really oil did shrug off, it shrug off a, a sort of a build on the DOE. Uh, so, you know, I think largely there are bigger things happening with oil. So, you know, quite frequently, uh, because there's so much going on in a geopolitical point of view and a supply and demand point of view within oil, um, you can kind of come into a DOE and really the figure actually doesn't really matter by the time you get you get into the DOE, there's kind of bigger things at play, there's more overriding factors um, influencing the price. So, you know, getting over to the charts, um, you can see actually something we did monitor this morning on the DAX was a uh, really violent um, bout of selling straight off the bat here um, on the 8 a.m. candle. Um, when it actually happened, the, the, we did just flush straight down into the into the pivot from quite high up here, and then just bounce, and then sort of slowly been working it within that range since. Um, you know, maybe a sign of uh, volatility to come perhaps uh, throughout the rest of the session um, in equities. But moving over to um, the Nasdaq. Uh, you can see not really that level of volatility seen across these counterparts in the US. Um, looking at this dollar strength really to speak of, because this really was the biggest move yesterday for me. Uh, we'll go ahead to the Dixie on the weekly bar chart here, right? The weekly bar chart, We're going back to kind of 2018 on the left of chart here. Um, and you can see there's this big old uptrend. This goes way back uh, to I think 2016. I'm not actually loading enough days for that on my chart at the moment, but uh, this is a, a pretty decent factor that we've been using for a number of months. Uh, and you can see just a huge update on the Dixie driving down, uh, driving down obviously the Euro and cable, but really cable did take the worst of it, uh, I have to say, uh, yesterday. So um, let's we'll switch back to these weekly bar charts. Uh, but yeah, I think while we may probe a little bit higher on the Dixie here for sure um, on the 60 minute um, you know I think uh, yeah it's quite dangerous I mean it's 94 spot 63s has been the target for the upside here um, going out on uh, this 60 minute chart you can see um, I have actually I'll just get rid of my face there you can see kind of the low uh, way back here from the 4th of August uh, to the sort of low angles there that we had on the 16th of August kind of gives us this actually you know what I'm just going to get rid of this trend because really the only thing that matters here on the Dixie uh, is definitely the 96 or sorry 94 spot 63s on the upside slightly contained right now uh, 9431s um, that is the high of the week of the 2nd of November 2020 uh, so we were definitely looking at this trade yesterday in the euro. Uh, if I can go over to the euro on the weekly bar chart here on the bottom of your screens, uh, you can see there was a slight area for the market to check off on. I'll go back down to the daily bar charts to show you that. But on the weeklies, really destination is the high of the week of the 8th of June, 2020 uh, here. So, you know, going now down to that, um, that daily bar chart, See, so it might take a quick second to, to get there. And yeah, it's just gonna load here for a second. Uh, yeah, so if we go all the way back to the last time we were in this area, you can see now um, where that arrow is. It was the low of the um, 22nd of July, 2020. And I just, I said it at the time, it was like, you know, this really isn't gonna provide much support, but it certainly will create a checkoff point 
in the inevitable downturn that we are getting in the euro and so sure enough we did actually come down to that yesterday on the top left of your screen we did come down to it held briefly for all of about i'd say 10 minutes and then we just kept pushing trucking on to the downside uh cable i mean for now for today trades on on euro i mean i would remain short i would have destination 15 645s in mind uh looking at cable chart here i mean absolutely decimated yesterday on that move um you know quite a, a lot of naysayers um on cable as you can imagine from that we're down i mean when is this this is a uh, tuesday so we're actually let's see monday yeah pretty much we're down 2%, 2.1% on the week so far in cable. Um, you know, where are we headed to, Tim? Well, really, we have to go back out to our daily bar chart. And this is actually a weekly bar chart here. Uh, we had a lovely area um, line in the sand, which I did tweet out about on Dog and Capital yesterday. And just briefly, we came in, held the bid, uh, flushed back up, and then just got hammered on dollar, uh, dollar strength. Um, so now we're down through there. I really like the high of the week of the 9th of November as a target here. Um, I don't know if the buyers are going to come back in and try and lift us up out of this area. Uh, really, we're so close to that 33.52s on the lows um, that I think, you know, destination is dialed in for today there. Um, so further dollar strength expected and it's certainly showing us a nice little bit of... Um, you know resilience here on the trend now it's you know resistance now we're above it's now support uh excess on the lows in this hourly bar dixie uh moving across to i mean gold yeah gold was actually a bit of a layup trade yesterday uh given that that dollar was just getting so uh spicy you know getting in on the shorts here anywhere here on this pullback uh, actually i remember we were looking for a pullback to the bear flag uh, point here didn't get it I was then looking for a pullback up here, didn't get it, and uh, gold. Not an easy trade, really, actually, to be honest. Not not easy to get on, um, but you'd really just have to be only focusing on your gold and your Dixie charts to be able to get on that one. But for the swing traders, if we do look at the gold um, on the swing, we have been looking at the, the breakdown here, and then any pullbacks above the 1752 spot fours, we were looking to sell that and sure enough we down we're down here target reached 1728 and that was on tuesday at about one o'clock just before the gold pit open took a bounce as you can see on tuesday and then uh wednesday's just you know wednesday has been absolute nightmare for gold uh further downside expected here to be honest uh so uh let's see um we'll just put this one away and then go over to the u.s equities now nasdaq on the daily bar i mean really for me i think while we are resistant under the 14876 you know that is the high here of the 7th of july i think the 100 ema set the test now it's, it's so close i think you know fine you know we we are going to test this it's just so close i mean failing that you know, if you do see, like, if, well, basically to explain myself here now, um, there's this sort of zone here, right? There's this sort of zone here that we're caught trading within. And I think as long as we are resistant on that R1, as we're showing right now on the chart, I think we can auction down, make a quick lick into the 100 EMA exponential moving average, 14,631s, and then find that support and, and try to get on up. I, I'm not going to be a huge fan of, of immediately buying um, the 100 EMA. It's not really something that I'd make a habit out of doing. Um, you know, we kind of use different methods on the elite team here uh, for, for, you know, buying and selling signals um, than that. But certainly if we do start to show support here, then I'd, I'd happily sort of buy at NASDAQ once we say push up back into the range, find some support look for the long here and try and get this trade, take something off at the top and then run the rest for the swing. Uh, you know, so lots to think about there on NASDAQ over the rest of uh, this week, today and tomorrow's trading sessions. Um, Spoo's, yeah, Spoo's here really, you know, after the touch into the 100 EMA, we are sort of compressing, if you like, um, of sorts into this uh, area. Um, 
you know, I think something a little bit like this going on. Um, you know, we did come into this moving up. So my theory always is, is we, we exit these sideways uh, penance compressions, I call them, um, on the upside, the same way we came, we, we, we were traveling before we started to compress. And uh, so with that in mind, I think further upside for the spoos, and therefore you, you could have a divergence on spoos to the upside, NASDAQ to the downside, and that just leaves us with uh, the Dow to look at. Now the Dow, I'm pretty happy with uh, my views for the longs on the Dow. Uh, just to cover some precise levels on the spoos, I think, yeah, you know, while we, you can see kind of the line in the sand here, the 4374s, I'll just show you the 4374s, of course, that double tap high, 13th, 14th of July, which we talked about a few times here. So, you know, now we were resistant yesterday. Now we're above, we should be supportive in here. And at least a pull down to the pivot, 4360 and a quarter, should be supportive in this area before then looking for further tests on the 50 EMA above. Um, and then the Dow, you know, I've been looking at this area on the Dow for a little over a week. And, uh, you know, where is it here? The 34,200s, um, 34, just around the yesterday on the 100 EMA. So I love this area here. I think we could easily turn this into quite the push up into the 34,775s um and beyond actually so i think there's a really nice um kind of amount of buying the dip here yesterday you can see this whole area on the 60 minute really for me not only just this area of interest i had you know I, look on tuesday it did flush down quite a lot and that was late in the session it wasn't even at my desk at this point um but sure enough when you miss an area like that you come in the next day and you can see here it just boom comes in uh, you get that support and so this whole area to me is just been the kind of developing um, of long positions uh, for further upside and um, so really good food for the buyers down in this area for for several reasons i have to say so uh yeah i think i don't well actually you know if we did have a retest in the 34 200s um i'd definitely be looking for more support to come in there more value buying to come in and then work it straight pretty fast up out of that area um so it's quite quite a lot of uh, stuff in my charts here i leave this uh, on for now though um yeah so that's the dow i'd be working yeah the levels i've said really on that Dow there and oil very resilient oil uh, on the daily chart you can see uh, pull back yesterday into what was around the 7370s level um you know low of day and then trading all the way back up and um, pre doe i might add we took that bid into a high of day yesterday all before the data um and then held actually we kind of well we kind of we kind of looked for the there were sellers coming in to try and sell the build figure and it just wasn't happening. And so we were quite elevated on the session coming into the figure. And if I go kind of down to a lower time frame here, of like, let's say five minutes, um, and we can see here DOE coming in. I'll just kind of uh, make that a little bit more obvious. You can see that downside just not being able to sustain uh, the selling here, just buyers slamming it right back up into high of day. 75, 74 is as you can see yes you guessed it it was a target that we had on the on the screens yesterday even um you know so that's what we're doing here in the room it's really we're you know mapping it out having good areas to get involved um, and i was trading this live myself and, and definitely the guys will will agree i was working on the longs here rather than the shorts so yeah i mean the bond picture a little bit of consolidation seems to be occurring uh within the bonds now trading sideways uh, really looking at T notes. I uh, just get my screen double. There we go. So you can see the sort of sideways action in the T notes. Ultimately, a test on the third one thirty two twos. I think it'll be sold, and ultimately downside target will be one thirty tens. Um. So yeah, that's it really. So um, that's it for me for today. Thanks a million for tuning in. And please do click and subscribe in YouTube when you see this and for live uh, 
pre-US videos um, or to be able to reach the recordings uh, prior to the market open each day, please do subscribe um, on Duggan Capital uh, to the Discord live room. All right, have a good day. And I'll talk to you later. Cheers.